Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Today is October 23rd, 2020. My name is Benjamin Stewart, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking today about using Notion. I created a video earlier this week and wanted to expand a bit on what I discussed earlier this week and some of uh, the changes that I've incorporated in, into my own teaching. Today's broadcast is specifically directed towards uh, teachers, uh, anyone or trainers, anyone who has uh, who's working with learners and presenting content online using Notion. I wanted to talk today about using uh, databases and embedding databases and looking at different views at different levels. So here I have projects, and within my projects I have one called In the Classroom. And In the Classroom basically is a place where I keep content that's related to um, my podcast and also anything that I upload here uh, to uh, YouTube. I also include any of the courses that I teach as open co courseware. This semester is we're all teaching 100% online. These are all online courses, but depending, uh, they could also be uh, in-person courses. This semester, I'm teaching a course called Listening and Speaking One. So we'll go into this course. Now, this page is essentially the syllabus. I talked a little bit about this in a prior video, and I talked about embedding videos or embedding um, tables or databases right within this page. And I wanted to talk about, uh, for me, the importance of embedding these databases so that they are essentially subpages of this, this uh, Notion page. So if I click here, you'll notice that the breadcrumb along the top remains the same. So this one page is where this one database resides. So if I go back to listening, speaking, the syllabus page and scroll down again, uh, this is an embedded database. And uh, again, I wanted to keep that within the, the breadcrumb so that students could easily find their way back to, uh, in this case, the, the main page. Now, what I've done this week is I've taken this a step further You'll notice that by default, I have the calendar view. And if you're familiar with databases, you have a lot of different options as to which views you want to choose from. For my purpose uh, here at this level, the calendar view works uh, quite well. And if I go to the main page, for me personally, I also like the calendar view if I'm working directly from this page as well. I, it's just... Uh, Nice to be able to select the day and, and see at a glance, day to day, which activities that, uh, that I'm uh, planning and uh, which activities my students are participating in. All right, so going back here to the syllabus page, scrolling down to the, uh, the course calendar, All right, you'll notice here that I have I have uh, pages called class. And so essentially what I do is I create a page per day, every day that I have class. I have class Monday through Friday from eight to 10 in the morning. So I record all of our online meetings and I make that available in each page for that day. So this is uh, from October 21st. I have a class October 22nd, which I'm still working on the video, which is why it doesn't appear. Well, actually it does in this day. Uh, today's October 23rd, so I'm still uh, putting together that video. But as soon as that is available, then I embed it within these pages. So students are easily able to access uh, and find the, the class, find the recording. And you'll notice below each of the recordings, there is another embedded database. Now notice that this embedded database is the same database as this one, right? And if I click here, it's the same as this. So the, the same database resides in various pages throughout, throughout my listening speaking course. And 
at this level, let me go back to the class. We'll take Wednesday, for example, of this week. This is nice because at this point, right, I can sort, I can filter and include just those activities that we worked on for that day. So in this case, I have these activities that we were working on. Each one of these activities turns out to be another page that relates to that particular activity or lesson or assignment or quiz or exam. So I have different properties set up to help me filter through. I have categories. I have types here as, uh, as shown. I've, I have uh, the module, which essentially is the week for my purpose. And I also have the unit. So I have a lot of options uh, as far as how I can filter and sort information based on these different properties. I should also mention I have a status. This one I'll come back to in here in a few minutes. And I have a tag property that I currently have not used. Everything that I'm sharing with you now is fairly new. I actually did something I usually don't like to do and introduced Notion and all of this information about a week ago, about 10 days ago. As we're finishing half of the semester, I typically don't like to introduce new technology in the middle of a semester. But in this particular case, I'm using Notion really as a way to just organize what we've already done. We work a lot in Microsoft Teams. This is where our online classes are conducted. Most of our conversations and messages and files, especially private files, are all within Microsoft 365 and specifically within Microsoft Teams. So that part has not changed. But I shared with the learners the, uh, this Notion page that I've set up in a way to hopefully allow them to access past content that we've already completed, that they can find the information and uh, access it as they, they need to. I was finding that uh, it was, since we've been doing a lot of different activities, in fact, you can see here at a glance, these are all activities. And um, the, I just this week, as you'll notice, started to make individual uh, entries into every single activity that that we do. Um, so the idea again is for students to be able to see at a glance kind of what we're doing, what's active, what have we completed, and uh, it's just a way that they can navigate around course content, I think, in a more effective way. So going back here to my example here, I've got class, I have the setup here for another embedded um, another embedded uh, database. And let's say that I want to start planning for next Monday. Today's the 23rd. I can simply right click and duplicate and then click and drag over to the 26th. Open it up. I'll change the title because I'm just calling it class. Notice the date changes and I can change whatever I need to change here. Probably at least for now, I'll just change this to week 10. We're still going to be in unit three. And, uh, you know, I can go back later and change the rest of the properties as necessary. But now from here, I can sort and filter however I wish based on which activities are going to be appropriate for that particular day. Any changes I make here, and this is key, any changes that I make to this page or to this database in this class, October 26th, will be specific to this day. In other words, if I make changes and whatever I have shown here will be, uh, will not affect the linked database and the view that I have here. I could actually set up, in which I probably will, I'll have different filters and, and ways of sorting information that will be specific to the day. And it won't change all of the other linked databases that, uh, in this case, in prior classes. Each class will have its, its own sort and filter and arrangement of activities, even though they're all from the same database, if that makes sense. So I can actually go in and keep these databases as they appear per class and have them 
be specific to each class. But yet if I go into each any one of these days, and if I were to make changes to this page, then this will be reflected. This one change will be reflected in any place where I access that same activity. Right. So let me just give you an, an example here. So if I click in or click on this activity and I just put a, an A here. Okay, just to, I'm in the 20 October 23rd. Let me go to October 22nd. Notice here that the change is reflected. So for me, this is perfect because I can go in and I can update as as I need to any of these different activities, but yet the way that it's filtered and sorted per day will remain the same. And this is what I want. I want students to see what we did for that that day. And I also want to be able to, as the instructor, update as I need to any of these activities that are listed uh, for, uh, for any individual class, any particular class. All right, so I can go back here. I'll go back and change that, remove that. And that should then be removed. That should reflect the change, right, as it's uh, been shown here. All right, so this is... Uh, something that, again, just I kind of fell upon as I was trying to put some ideas together. And uh, again, you'll notice that I'm being a little bit more specific in this week, this week being October 19th through the 23rd, because essentially I just started um, including the very specific activities. That's why there's a difference between what you see this week versus prior weeks. It seems that there's less activities when. That's really not the case. It's just that I haven't gone back and added activities uh, for the first eight uh, weeks. I, I was basically just trying to move information over quickly so that uh, I could, going forward, use Notion to offer this level of detail. But notice that this activity starts on the 20th, and this goes to the until the 22nd, right? And so you can see where some activities will be for a specific day versus others that will uh, will take longer than one day. And uh, this one is, uh, this is another task that started on the 22nd, will goes until the 26th and so on, right? And so I can go in and change this. Um, this actually started, I believe it started the 21st. If I change this day to 21st, then it starts here, and then we'll go to the 26th, and so on. So I wanted to share this with you. Uh, this is how I'm currently using Notion. For me, it's working out quite well so far. And um, I see that there's still areas where I can be more specific. Start use. I could start using the um, the properties, I think, a little bit better in terms of maybe some of the classifications, maybe even some of the tags, and uh, start sorting information based based on uh, these classifications. If anyone is using Notion in the classroom, feel free to share your ideas. You can reach me at my Twitter handle at B-N-L-E-E-Z. This has been In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for watching.